Well, today's Wednesday, the big day, loading. And of course, with trucks, it's always, uh, anything can go wrong, right? So does it start? Okay, it started. So now, I have in kilometers 354563, 354,563 kilometers. So it's a very low mileage truck, boys and girls. Worth its weight in gold. But unfortunately, I think by the time I'm ready to retire, prices will probably go, go down again. But it is a rare truck to find, actually. I remember that Mac, the previous Mac, you know, I couldn't sell it through uh, uh, free media, like online ads like Kijiji here in Canada or like, like Craigslist. Couldn't sell it, there was no interest. And then I, I paid a little bit of money and I put it on our uh, Auto Trader Canada. Because Auto Trader, I don't know about US, but in Canada, if you look at the top there, they don't have only cars, they only, uh, you can also advertise commercial trucks and trailers. And that auto trader, I'm telling you, works. So, if you remember, I got a call from the guy in Newfoundland, Newfoundland, like a thousand miles away, Canada, but very far, right? And he, he says, well, we were looking specifically for a four axle truck. You know, except of course I made a big boo-boo blunder and they included HST 13% tax and the sales price and so I pretty much didn't make any money it was a big mistake on my part speaking about Max next to me is this new Mac you know with fancy headlights man this guy came late at night yesterday and I I'm back there's a grass behind me right I don't I try to stay away from people and this guy was so bad at backing, I'm sorry to say, that it required two people. The guy on the other side came out, was watching, and I came out because he almost hit me first time. I, I had to honk my powerful four air horn unit. And he came out, looked, and these trucks in here, there was nothing. This thing was empty. <laughs> Right there, this guy, he tried to back somewhere there, then he comes back, he turned, he went over there, he turned around, and I don't know if you know this, but the problem with what seems like a new driver is that they're conditioned at a trucking school uh, to back at a 45 degree angle, right? Because that's, I, I, I think on some tests, it's even called 45 degree backing. Because they assume that's what you use in real life right and I came over to the guy and I said why are you you know making it so hard on yourself this half a football field in the front uh, why don't you just go straight forward and then back right and the guy looks at me it's okay I got it I can see the yellow line but before he was went like this and he was trying to back at, at an angle like they teach him right and it was it was dangerous for this particular owner operator because I've been hit I don't care what people say you know I've been hit uh, what three times in my international one time in my Mac one time in this where the guy just went too close to my truck and hit the fender with his trailer I'm telling you and it's always in parking lots I'm not even counting on the road like where that crazy pickup truck hit me in the in the in the track of my excavator doing 150 miles an hour so so the truck started by the way I was driving all day yesterday at 60 miles an hour and and I'm empty right but I'm still 57,000 pounds and my average was 29 liters per 100 kilometers which if you look on Google liters per hundred kilometers to miles per gallon 
it's 8.1 miles per gallon so I'm real happy about that and I filled up yesterday of course I always stop in uh, Marysville Michigan just on the other side of the border when I crossed from Canada and crossing went pretty crossing went pretty smoothly the guy just for once the guy didn't ask me a single question can you believe this because he was busy chatting with his girlfriend what looked like in the background takes my passport takes my printed out manifest closes the window not not a word then 1.5 1.5 minutes later opens the window have a good day <laughs> that's how it should be no border crossing but he saw I was empty right so he and I told him you know when you do the manifest they, they always ask you when you don't have the fast card which I don't you have to tell them the address and the states enter the US address for the driver required when the driver doesn't have a fast card and so I entered I said get a pillar 100 tractor drive E dot Peoria comma il I L and so I guess that's why the guy didn't want to talk to me anyway hold on one second we we're almost ready to roll no we're still below 100 F on the water gauge or coolant I just need to send uh, a quick message communication like all brokers that work with me not a single guy accused me of of poor communication so subject update from Sergey message made it to Porter I am late last night leaving for Illinois now ETA to cat in E dot Peoria comma I L is this thing says 930 which is BS so we add another hour so 1030 let's say 1045 10 45 a.m. Central Daylight Savings CDT and of, in the end you always have to end over and out <laughs> that's my attempt at humor in the morning that's it now the guy should be happy and the next message will be will be arrived at shipper and after that it'll be loaded leaving shipper ETA to the border is oh by the way speaking about the border I, I still haven't figured out oh we over 100 beautiful so now we can go and you see this thing it's already in day uh, daylight mode which means it's 646 local time 746 at home in Ontario so I'm already on central time so 646 and that's what I wanted I wanted to leave at 7 but just for the heck of it let at least put on some clearance lights Brake check. Brakes work. And so yeah, yesterday I wanted to go and let these guys check my uh, amber lights, but it looked like they were busy. I didn't want to wait for two hours. 
because the problem with these uh, truck stops is they never have enough mechanics so they're very slow or they go on the road call right which is for them it's a priority because they make more money and so you can be stuck there for like two hours four hours you know and quite often they just ask you for for your cell phone number and basically go away we'll call you when we're ready for you but you see these guys have one two three four five six six lanes so it's a pretty big shop but i think i only saw like three lanes were busy so i think they only have like three mechanics over here but this is my favorite truck stop when when i have a big load because there's a lot of room in the back there you can do a u-turn and or you can just pull straight even with a jeep and and booster so this is a ta in porta indiana price of diesel today is what five empty space nine the light the light burned out <laughs> it's probably five seven nine. Oh, by the way yesterday right I stopped in Marysville and just as I thought the price was cheaper than anywhere else it was only quote unquote four dollars and 86 cents US a gallon but that's you know any everywhere else it's all five bucks so I got 150 gallons boys and girls so over 700 bucks which is a thousand Canadian and that's why that's why nowadays you cannot do loads for cheap forget it and so this doors are <laughs> man and it's funny, basically. In 500 meters, use the right lane to take the I-94 west ramp to Chicago. I wanted to pinpoint something important. That the most vital factor in how much the load pays often is not your equipment you know let's say you have 10 axles you have a jeep you have a booster you know you have a super powerful truck with six or five horsepower cummins nobody cares about that what they care about is their own their own butt right just like that load actually wait a second why am i signaling I'm, on I-94 West. All right, we'll signal over here. Yeah, basically, quite often, if there's some kind of an urgency, like they're keeping, like always, they keep the machine at the port until the last possible minute, and then either the fees kick in and the customer starts panicking, you know, like the storage fees, or the broker has a contract with his customer which is often not the final customer but the big freight forwarder like freight forwarder who takes care of the you know ships and stuff like that and then they they outsource the trucking part to uh, to the to the freight broker and so I, like last load right that I lost when I was sitting in Columbia New Jersey and I booked I pretty much booked a load right the guy sent me the rate confirmation it was loading in Baltimore right 185 miles away but they wanted to me they wanted me to basically drop everything and get going because I said what's the problem why is it, why it cannot wait one day and the guy said, well, we're going to lose business with this, with this freight forwarder for 30 days if we don't pick up uh, 
today. Yeah, yeah, they, this was morning and they wanted me to drop everything and drive non-stop four and a half hours to Baltimore. Like, why did you wait for the last day, right? But that's what happens, you see, when they don't, basically they have a contract with this freight forwarder, right? And they, they have some obligations under that contract and when they don't fulfill them, when they don't move the freight, probably within a certain amount of days, the freight forwarder locks them, locks the, lock, locks them down, locks them out for 30 days. And that's what they say. We're not gonna. If we miss this window today, we won't be able to do any loads for this for this customer for 30 days. And of course, that's a big blow, right? And so, a situation like that, they don't care how much a load pays. They don't care if you have two axles, one axle or 10 axles, right? They just want this freight out of there, right? And that's the most important thing. And as a trucker, you look for loads like that, right? Of course, if it's sensible, if you can do it, like I I wasn't in the mood, right? I just came from Brooklyn with a crazy load where I had to drive at night. I still felt like a zombie. You know how you feel when you didn't sleep whole night, right? And so I made good money and so I wasn't in the mood to just drive like a maniac again. But if I was fresh, you know, all rested, this would be a cool load because it was fairly, it was like 50,000 pounds, you know? But they, got, they were paying pretty good money per mile, you know, to go back to Canada. And so that's what the purpose of this rent is, is that, you see like now, right? I have, I have a regular Trident trailer, but four axle truck. Because I don't think, uh, let me see, can you do this on a six axle rig, like a regular truck with a tandem or total of three plus three, six. So you can do 20 times six, let's see. 120 minus, Minus, let's say, if you have a light trailer, let's say 20 for the 20 for the trailer, that's 100. Minus 20 for the truck, if you have a light truck with a small engine, 80. Yeah, you see, you can still do it on a six axle rig if you have like a regular uh, 35 ton trailer, a regular uh, truck. Like, actually, even a four axle truck, like my Mac, right, that I was talking about before. My Mac was, 3,000 pounds lighter, I know for a fact, than this. So the Kenworth, just the truck, is 27,000 pounds. And Mac was 24. And why was it lighter? Because first of all, it had a 13 liter engine. The wheelbase was uh, 10 inches shorter. And it had a single frame. Whereas Kenworth has a double frame uh, longer wheelbase and large engine oh and the sleeper the, the sleeper is also uh, sleepers are heavy right so Mac I had a what like a 6 58 inch sleeper flat roof where here I have this humongous kind of like apartment you know on <laughs> sleeper on steroids I like this one much better but that's what makes the truck heavier right and the trailer the trailer, as I, as I often say, is, uh, because it's a 60 ton, it's 7,000 pounds heavier than my previous 55 ton. With the same axles, let's say you, you compare three and three or four and four, it's the same. So 57 now, my empty weight, right? So if I had my Fontaine, I would be 50. If I had my Mac, I would be 47,000 pounds. 47 versus 57. <laughs> That's a huge difference, you know? So it's, it's bad for light loads, but you see, I can still do it. So that was the whole point of trading in 55 ton for a 60 ton, is first off, I wanted a flat deck And now, of course, I want I want drop side rail again. 
but back then I worked for this outfit as the owner operator and they were giving me all kinds of loads right I couldn't choose pretty much and I was losing loads with the drop side trail because I couldn't do small machines and I couldn't do machines that had uh, low ground clearance but you see now quite often I do heavy loads and heavy loads are tall and so I drop side and now I can the most important thing I'm independent right so I can choose my own loads So yeah, for something like this, for this dozer. Oh, but then of course, uh, the, the problem, another problem with drop side rail was, uh, you had to ask much more questions than, than now. You know, now I don't, I just ask, how much in the whale does it need? Can it fit into 26 feet? And second, how tall it is? Because my, I, I don't wanna be over 14.5, 14 feet, you know five inches somewhere like Ohio or New York because then you need all kinds of pilots and you know route surveys and I don't like that that's wasted time wasted money and so that's it if I know that it can fit into 26 feet it's not too crazy tall not too crazy wide and of course the weight right but with a 60 ton that's the least of my worries usually because I can get the Jeep, the booster, I can switch to a 2 plus 2 and quite often of course a tandem will give you more weight. Uh, like for example now I'm talking to a guy who is a big excavator in Virginia and I called a friend of mine who lives in Virginia just to confirm like can you can you do this with a quad trailer or would it be better three plus one or something and he says yeah quad they will only give you something like 65 68 000 pounds so that's not enough and then i say okay so three plus one and he says yeah you probably get close to 60 on the tridem and maybe like try to get like 17 18 on the booster and then I look up at my own little table or spreadsheet where I have pretty much all states uh, where it shows uh, the difference between 2 plus 2 and quad and 3 plus 1 I look at Virginia and it says Virginia quad 60 uh, 65 3 plus 1 is 56 plus 20 for some reason but Two plus two is, uh, I think it was uh, 44, yeah. In Virginia, maximum you can get on a tandem is 44. Like 44 on the truck, on the tandem. And so, if you have two plus two, you get 44 and 44, 88,000 pounds. So, right? So that's the best way, but unfortunately, I don't want to change my trailer too often so for this one three plus one will work but that's what I'm saying that I don't care about the weight so the most important things I care about are the the height and how how much in the world but when I had the drop side rail, I had to ask two more questions all the time. And usually people had no idea what I'm talking about. So first off, I needed to know the ground clearance, right? Because the drop between the center and the sides was eight inches. So on the drop side rail, if any machine had, let's say six inches or seven inches of ground clearance, I could not do it like let's say that shuttle wagon remember the shuttle wagon where we had to use all kinds of boards and then another machine or oh, even this one I just did uh, that bolter that I delivered in Brooklyn right was very low as well and the center like my trail is 
so 22 inches loaded right so it's all level deck on the drop side rail I had 23 in the center so it was taller but then 14.5 on the sides and sometimes that just makes things very difficult and and that's the thing when you're booking a load right so I would have to ask people like with this dozer let's say I have the same 55 ton I would say I need to know the ground clearance okay with caterpillar it's pretty easy you know they can send you the drawing or you can look it up online yourself right once you know the make and model and then another thing I have to ask is the the distance between the tracks right that's another pain in the butt because some of these small dozers like D6 it's not small right D6 is like medium size but I remember when I had that John uh, that 55 ton uh, this premium guy when I was an owner operator he gave me a, a small dozer like a 20,000 pound dozer it was kind of like a back backhaul load right from US back to Canada and uh, and the tracks were maybe like I don't know two inches wider like the inside distance was maybe two inches wider than my raised center and you understand how that's a problem right so I was like my heart was bleeding as I saw this guy going and of course he was very good he was watching me but he had to be extremely precise with only one inch on each side you know between the between my center frame and his track and of course he hit it a couple of times so he was scratching it you know and then also that that the importance of that uh, basically the inconvenience of this was proven when I uh, when I was trying to sell this trailer and actually a guy calls me he says oh we're actually looking for a drop side rail he says we run uh, a construction company and we also do some uh, we also do some uh, trucking sometimes people hire us to move stuff and he says we with we, we were thinking about getting a drop side rail you know so we can move uh, tall machines and I said that sounds like a winner I want to sell it you want to buy it let's hook up and I remember this was in uh, Belleville Belleville Ontario east of east of uh, uh, Toronto okay hold on let me set my cruise control 97 97 clicks an hour translates to 60 miles an hour and because I have 391 my engine spins at 1400 1410 now so but turns out that's a very good speed for this truck so it, it, it does pretty good on fuel economy at least when it's a straight level and so yeah so the guy comes in and I remember in Belleville they have this Walmart and there's a huge parking for trucks and there's no signs you know sometimes they say oh no trucks but this particular Walmart back then it was trucker friendly so I parked there the guy comes over and the first thing he said was oh man he says that center is really tall you know because what I see in Ontario in Ontario people get you know we most guys buy locally made trailers because they are stronger like we have a bunch of manufacturers over there right the JC trailer Temisco and then what's this other guy J&J uh, &J trailer I think or something like that 
And so they can build your trailer and in Canada because we have uh, they give us more weight per axle usually people build a heavier trailer so they last longer but in my case I go to US all the time I need an American trailer because Canadians uh, Canadian trailers not not only are they heavy but also often they're quite tall especially if you buy from uh, Western Canada because in Western Canada, you know, they don't have the limit of 13.6. Nobody cares. There's no bridges most of the time, so you can you can drive with a 15 foot overall height. So Western Canada height is not a problem, right? But Eastern Canada and Northeast U.S. it's a big deal, and that's why I have an American trailer. But what they do is, you know, when they buy a Canadian trailer and they want a drop side rail, they get a very small drop. You know, they don't get eight inches like my crazy Fontaine had, but they get, let's say, four inches, you know? And so the center is probably like, I don't know, 22 inches or maybe less. And then the sides are lower but it's not a big drop right so which means you can load if you have only four inch drop right you can still load a six inch ground clearance machine right and that's what i thought you know if i if i if i ever if i ever buy another drop side rail or maybe get like a deck for this one I don't know but this so now everything is everything is so expensive because of all these shortages uh, it just doesn't make any financial sense to spend you know fifty sixty thousand dollars on the, on the deck where my my first trailer that 55 ton Fontaine was I still remember it was 73,000 US now same trailer and that was with three axles now same trailer Fontaine 55 ton a regular 55 ton is like 120,000 130,000 you know it's almost double and so I thought of I'd be changing trailers but you know like what's the point right you sell this one 60 ton and you only have enough money to buy a 50 ton but the good news would be probably that if I sell this one I could buy a trailer for cash you know and then there's no payments Maybe go back to what I had like a 55 ton with four axles you know but then I won't be able to go to Western Canada which I don't like but look what happened in in January right I made a bunch of money just because uh, I had the Jeep and the booster and I can take heavy loads into Western Canada Somewhere here there'll be a big trampoline over here. Maybe further up. But so this is I-94, right? We are 10 miles away from the turnoff for 80. Oh I think it's over here. Like check this out. Oh wow, they 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 patched it. They patched it, it became less, but before the truck would go like this, like airborne, you know, and you can see all the cars, boom, 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 yeah, which is very dangerous, like especially when you have a load. Now, 
Well, 7-11 in the morning, look at the traffic. Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Or Talbert. Talbert, uh, 55 ton, four axles, see? Four axle truck. This guy specialized, right? Frontier. That's what he got, right? He got a 55 ton with uh, like his first trailer. I don't know how many trailers he has now, but he had a 55 ton, 18 inches loaded deck height. Very important to be low, either that or a drop side rail. And he got 28 feet in the well. Very nice. Because I'm often short, you know, even one foot, I'm 26, right? So even one foot, I lost a couple of loads because the guy says, no, it's not going to fit into 26. You need at least 27. So you freaking, you kidding me, right? Just one foot, we cannot chop something off? No. Okay. And then he got four axles, quad, with a hydraulic lift on last axle and airlift on on axle three and what happens he goes and buys a jeep and the booster <laughs> because that trailer did not work where he he was running because quads of course they you know they don't get the respect in many states like i said you see like virginia right virginia only gives you 65, 65 uh, thousand pounds on a quad, which is ridiculous. And so basically, yeah, if you have a quad trailer and quad truck, you cannot run everywhere. You're limited to particular areas, right? And so when you buy a trailer, you got to go by your local rules, right? Where, where you want to run. And so on Frontier, since he lives in Florida, right? And Georgia has very particular rules about heavy loads, like after 150,000 pounds, you need to have a Jeep and or booster, or both, right? So he should have gotten a different setup, not a quad. No, of course, a quad is good, but, and his last axle was a flip axle, right? So. Uh, that's good but I remember last time we talked he was saying that he wish he would have bought a modular 55 ton modular because he bought a fixed uh, bogies because modular helps you with shims right when you have a heavy load you can shim so you can transfer more weight and he says in his experience because he worked like crazy there in uh, northwest in Dakotas, right? He would love to have a 2 plus 2. Because just like a case with Virginia, many states will give you more weight for tandem plus tandem, 2 plus 2 versus 3 plus 1 and especially a quad, you know? But quad is fine in Northeast. Couple of times I got like, look at that guy. Couple of times I got 23,000 per axle on the back, 92,000 pounds, nobody said anything. Like on my permit. So you don't need a booster in Northeast. But let's say you're loading in Ohio and you're going to Alberta, right? You need the booster. You need the Jeep. 
So anyway, no trail is perfect. It all depends on the area where you operate. But again, I want to point out that the most important thing is supply and demand. If the broker wants to move a load, even if it's like, in my case, right, 50,000 pounds, they will pay you a very nice rate for a regular, a regular double drop or IGN. Especially if you're persistent and you know how to talk to people. Because guess what? This guy, he did not give me the rate. Hey, Sergey. We're paying this. Can you pick up tomorrow or next week? No, he's he sends a quote request, right? And then you have to come up with a quote. And so you cannot be shy, you know, or you gotta stand your ground. And so I give him a high high price because again I Michigan, I don't know yet, right? I, I applied for my permits yesterday and I told the, the girl, I said, please apply from uh, Michigan first. Let's see if they will approve it or not. And so I don't know. I don't know yet if Michigan will allow me to go through with uh, 107,000 pounds gross weight of gross weight. So if they don't allow me, I'll have to go through Ohio, PA, New York, you know? and. Uh, that would be like a thousand miles, almost probably 40% longer than if I were to go through Port Huron. And this just delivers one hour east of Port Huron on the Canadian side. London, Ontario. There's a big uh, cat dealer over there. Right, and so you have to, you look for a load that expedite you know something that has to ship hot load and then you push the right buttons you read you read and you reread the Dale Carnegie's how to win friends and influence people so you try to look at things from their point of view and that's that's all I gotta say about that. What is this gray? Missing endangered person, Toyota Camry. Well, that's why he's missing. He was driving a Toyota Camry. Uh, if he was driving a Dodge Charger or Dodge Challenger, I bet he would not be missing. That's what happens. You drive a wrong car. Anyway, where are we? 2.5 kilometers to Iowa. To the, well, that's what it says. The, the arrow points to the right and it says 2.5 clicks. to be in the in the very right lane and this guy is sleeping on the job yeah you I'm talking about you gonna wake up sometime today because that lane is not going to Iowa I'm sorry to say mr. u1425 Maybe he was not going to Iowa. Ah, okay. 
he stays on 294 all right my bad but why would you drive in the curb lane at this junction because over here people are changing you know people are changing lanes like crazy and so it's a bad idea to drive in the curb lane before them before the major kind of like intersection like this right so there's 80 and 294 294 goes north towards Wisconsin and now we're going west towards Iowa all right breakdown breakdown check this out have you seen the movie breakdown very nice movie Unfortunately, it's not about trucks. It's about the SUV. Where the the guy's vehicle is compromised and uh, basically the crooks, gangsters, abduct them, right? So they set up the car to fail, the SUV. So it was a cool movie. The guy and his wife had to fight for their life somewhere in the middle of nowhere, like Iowa or Nebraska or something like that. So, what else is going on? Oh, I have, I have the, I have the new camera. I got my Sigma lens back. I haven't tested the, the, haven't tested them yet. I'm selling my old uh, D780, which is one year old, because I don't need two cameras. So, if any of you guys want a full frame Nikon, let me know. The price is uh, 2200 Canadian for the Nikon with uh, 1300 shutter activations. So pretty much a new camera. It has very nice uh, live view, like it's very good for movies. But the D850 that I just bought is uh, better for photography because it has a higher resolution, but the live view is a joke. Uh, movies there's no autofocus pretty much so d780 is like a mirrorless camera once you switch to live view and it's much more recent much more recent model right here in Canada brand new it's uh, 3,000 Canadian plus tax which is uh, 3400 bucks that's what it costs brand new in Canada right now and my accordion is on sale on Facebook on Kijiji some guy was making fun of me he says sends me a message on Facebook no on Kijiji that looks like a Chinese knockoff would you take $500 Canadian <laughs> which which is 350 US I didn't even bother replying I, I just I just deleted the message because yeah that's a, not a knockoff it's a genuine genuine Russian folk instrument custom made I paid 2800 US for that one it has a small leak from day one somewhere like a uh, air leak right but it, it sounds super nice very rich uh, sound and that's what what uh, Russian accordions are famous for like this one has six reeds or six voices on the bass so when you push one button six voices are activated which creates a very rich you know Russian style bass very deep I like it but I have the Italian one coming so I I cannot carry two accordions because you know it's a very delicate instrument they don't like heat they don't like cold so you, you cannot leave it in your car in the summer and I don't have a house right so I can only take care of one accordion 
and that Italian one, Dino Buffetti, is gonna be, you know, a really nice, a really nice instrument. Kind of like a present to myself on my 60th birthday. Like a little bit belated, but very nice. 